Hi folks, now this is part, this, let's say part two of this little podcast thing. Um, by the way, if you want to check my main site out, everything's free. It's clubpod.co, clubpod.co. Now I'm recording this as I'm walking home, it's, I'm in the woods, so, and it's getting a bit dark. So it'll be interesting what noises it picks up, but this is a bit of a world a real world reality rather than pretending everything's fake and stuff now in this part in the first part uh, I basically said do your research go out and listen and do as mu- learn as much as you can before you start as you would in the business you don't want to walk straight into a shop and set it up without understanding how the business works and as I say, and I always say this, I've often heard people say, only surround yourself with positive people who basically kiss your ass and say you're brilliant. Well, I'm going to say the opposite. They're the worst to people to be around. You want people to give you feedback who are honest. People tell you the podcast or whatever you do. So if it's a website or a business, the last thing you want is people saying, This is great because it achieves nothing. You want people to be honest and find as many faults as they can because even the most successful business can improve and you can be the most successful podcast. It doesn't mean that you can't improve. So some people might, the feedback might be that you're doing the podcast too long. The sound level might be not too high or too low. Things like this. There's nothing wrong with and don't have a big ego if you can't have if you can't accept criticism you're going to fail and i've seen this over and over the people with the big egos fail because they can't accept criticism they, they just want people to say they're doing brilliantly they don't want to learn you know i i have always said this i know nothing and that's how i like to treat myself I like to constantly learn because I'm always finding new things, new skills, new new software. I'm always learning something to try and improve. So everything, so even going back because I started off doing shoots and things, I've learned a lot from, from the start. And this is what you should be doing. If you think you know it all, you're a disaster. Anybody who claims to be an expert podcaster and knows it all is a disaster. So um, that's just basically repeating myself. Now, in this section, I'm going to say let's. St- this is the beginning. Now, before we start on what equipment you need, there's you've got two options basically. Do you buy a mic and plug it into your computer, or have an external mic? And record everything externally. Now I've heard a lot of people give advice saying buy a, you can buy a USB mic, plug it in and off you go. Now for me these people they, they don't they don't, I don't think they've ever done a podcast because they're just going into I think they're trying to get freebies off companies and they don't want to slag off the company because they want somebody to give them the free gear. Now I'm gonna be honest because as I say this is a real world environment I speak from not some pretend or that I think I know it this is from experience my advice is not to buy a plug-in USB mic unless you're doing such as live shows you know if you if you're going to chat say on the internet doing USB um, sorry doing YouTube vids or things like that then yes there's probably more advantage to doing that and there are going to be other circumstances to do a, a USB mic. However, the reason I wouldn't do that is because you sort of limit yourself. You're forced to sit in front of a computer uh, rather than, say, go into a different room. Now, as you can hear, I'm walking. At the moment, this is just a clip-on mic, just a cheap one. 
I think it was only a tenner, plugged into a, a little part of bulb recorder. It means I can go anywhere and I'm not stuck to a computer. So say today, if I wanted, and, uh, and there was an event on, I could go down and record with it, chat to people. Um, with it being a clip-on mic, it's possible I don't even need to wave a mic in front of them because it might pick, if I got close enough, it should pick up them as well. And, oh, I'm, so there's some fireworks off in the background, I'm not sure what that's for. I don't know if it's someone's birthday. Now, oh, sorry, I'm just crossing over. So that, this is, um, sort of like I say, in the real world, I'd opt for an external one. Now, there's another reason I'd opt for an external one, rather than plugging your computer. If your computer's got, isn't one of these solid state hard drives and it's got a fan on, you're going to, there's a good chance it's going to whirl, you know, with the fan, once the fan kicks in, you'll get the noise from the fan. You might have the noise from the hard drive and you may get just natural buzzing noises. Um, in the same way, you don't record, and this is something I should have done from the start, but you d if you're recording, f say, filming somebody, especially in the old days, if you had an old camera, not the sort of digital ones now where it just saves to um, a, you know, a little memory card. In the old days, you might have had, um, say, a VHS tape in our anything mechanical whirling around. Now often what happened was that would record the, the sound, when you're recording the built-in sound on the camera, it'd record that and you'd have this sort of noise. And what they always advised was record the sound separate because it was, okay, it was a bit harder then, but it's much easier now to uh, you know bring the sound in clean it up and then put it onto the film and just use the sound on the film to match the sound you've recorded. So you'd sort of see, it, you normally when you're looking at video, you can see, and even set any sound thing, you'll see lines going up and down. So if it's a loud sound, it'll go huge. And if it's soft, it would be, you know, you don't get these soft peaks, like mountains it looks like. And you can use that to match up. And plus, the very worst is, um, if you do record in your camera and you forget to record separate sound, at least you've still got some sound. It might not be brilliant, but you haven't thrown the footage away. Now, this is why I, I wouldn't recommend plugging a mic into a computer, simply because you're going to have all that noise, or possibly all that noise. Now, when you... If you're recording, my advice is always shut everything down. So if you've got a computer on, unless you need it on, switch it off. It just saves that feedback. Um, I mean, personally, I turn as much electric off as you can. The more you turn off, the ch less chance you're going to get interference. Now, you can clean it up, but it's always better to have the better sound to begin with. Now, this is... Um, so that that's why I call this real world rather than some sort of I get irritated when I watch YouTube videos because you can tell what all they're interested in doing is saying buy this gear because I want the freebies and so they don't so they advise I, I get the impression they've not really done any podcasting it just doesn't feel real and that's the, this is the difference I'm trying to put across. All this I'm trying to put forward, I'm doing free, as I say. But it's also, it's down to a bit of experience. I'm not done massive. You know, I'm not some sort of um, podcast who's made, got millions of hits. It's just somebody who's just done it as an amateur level and has made quite a few mistakes. And from that, I'm trying to pass advice on. And therefore... It's, it's, I mean, you can take it with a pinch of salt, what I'm saying, but that, that's basically that. So that's part two. It's 
should you use a computer? I mean, if you plan on doing stuff on YouTube live, then I think it probably is easier just to plug a mic into the computer because you're obviously going to have to be on the computer. But, like I say, you, for the sake of what you're buying, an extra, you know, an extra, a little recorder like this, it's going to be as much, maybe a few pounds, but not much more than a USB mic. And plus, you don't have to wear... The other advantage of this is what happens if your computer crashes as you're recording or the battery dies if it's not plugged in or even the fact that you might just knock the lead and everything comes tumbling down. You know, you can't... And there is another aspect to this, by the way is if you plan on simultaneously recording a video, which some people do, and put them on YouTube, so you've got both the audio and a video. Well, if you're doing it on the computer, it means you've also got a big laptop with a lid up in the way, well, oh, it's, it's possibly you're gonna have that on the footage unless you can move it out of the way, rather than having a nice empty desk. Uh, it's it's trial and error, but in reality, it's useful to have an external mic and a recorder, regardless. Oh dear, I'm just um, walking past the stream here, folks. It'll be interesting to see if it picks up, because this little mic's only a cheap little thing. It's a Sony clip-on. It plugs in the um, little recorder I've got. And it's only a cheap recorder. But I found, and this is, I'll go on to equipment later, but I did find that I bought um, a, a big, a big proper recorder. But I found taking it out was a pain in the butt because I had a big mic and a big recorder. And this is um, originally what I started off doing. But oh, it was just too heavy and bulky and it sucked up power like crazy. And in reality, it was going to get damaged. So rather than damaging it, this thing just fits in my pocket. Um, anyway, that's that's for another episode because at the moment I'm just walking a woods and I can't remember what gear I've got, so it'd be just guesswork. But like I say, when you hear people say, buy your plug-in mic into your computer, yeah, um... I don't think that's the best, unless it's going to be something of use. As I say, you've got to work out what you're going to be doing. Um, you see, the advantage of having a little portable thing is you can go into a different room with quite with ease. And people don't notice as well. You see this little thing, I've got this clipped on. And I can walk past people and they don't even see it. And that can help, because if you say you were um, interviewing people in a crowd or something... You're not going to get people as conscious. They'll, they'll switch off um, and be more relaxed. It's a bit like pointing a big camera at somebody. If you do that, people are more conscious and they're not as natural. Well, if they don't notice the camera, I mean, they still know that you're recording them, then it's they're more relaxed. They can switch off. But that's that for now. So as I say... Um, it's not professionally done, as you can see. I'm just me just chatting, and it's quickly done. Probably mistakes in this. But I'll set... I've got the site set up, as I say. It's, I, can, I can never remember the name. Um, Oclubpod.com C-L-U-B-P-O-D dot C-O Check it out if you want. And if you want to contact me and ask me any questions or anything, just feel free. Just say, this is not me trying to flog you something. I'm not one of these where they will tell you, oh, yeah, you're great. I mean, this is, by the way, this is a little tip, and I'll keep saying this, and I'll probably mention it a few times. There's a lot of people out there who don't give a rat's ass if you're successful or not. They'll just tell you you're great, do whatever just as long as you pay us, and we'll promote your site, and they'll promise you the world. My experience is you will, you'll be disappointed by the results. All right then, folks. 
Bye. Clubpod.co. 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 Okay.